In this video, I will be talking about femoral shaft fractures in adults as well as in children. To start with the anatomy, the femur is the largest tibular bone in the body and it has the largest surrounding muscle mass. There is an anterior bow and the isthmus is the narrowest region in the bone. After a fracture, there are many deforming forces which act on the bone itself. The abductors, which are the gluteus, medius and minimus, which insert on the greater trochanter, cause abduction of the proximal fragment. The iliosvas inserts on the lesser trochanter and causes the proximal fragment to go into flexion and external rotation. The adductors, which insert over the medial aspect of the shaft, have a tendency to take the fragment into varus. The gastronomus inserts over the distal femur and causes the flexion of the distal fragment and the fascia lata acts as a tension band which resists the medial adduction forces. So starting with pediatric shaft of femur fractures, pediatric shaft of femur fractures consists of 1.6% of all fractures in children. It is often seen more in boys than girls and it has a bimodal distribution which is that there is a peak at 2 to 4 years then there is a second peak in the mid adolescent age. It is very important to rule out child abuse. The mechanism of injury in children include direct trauma, a rotational injury which can cause indirect fracture and it can be also due to pathological processes like osteogenesis imperfecta and fibrous dysplasia. For clinical evaluation, an initial evaluation should be done for cervical spine, airway, breathing and circulation. Once these are secured, a local examination will reveal tenderness, swelling and deformity and inability to ambulate for the child. A careful neurovascular examination must be performed as it can lead to sciatic nerve injury. The vital stride include head injury, abdominal or thoracic trauma and a shaft of femur fracture and is very commonly associated with road traffic accidents. We should also examine the ipsilateral hip and knee. Another important examination should be looking for indirect signs of physical abuse in children. These include fractures in various stages of healing, signs of head injury, bruising or patterned abrasions, burn or bite marks, cigarette burns, inappropriate response to pain for the child, withdrawal on touch, an anxious child and injuries that do not corroborate with the caretaker's history. Radiological evaluation for pediatric shaft of femur fractures include a AP and lateral view of the femur showing both the hip and the knee joint. An additional trauma series should be performed which include the x-ray of the cervical spine, a chest x-ray and a pelvis x-ray to rule out major injuries. We can also do a CT scan of the head and perform a fast scan for ruling out head injuries and abdominal injuries. The initial treatment involves splinting of the limb. In case we are in the field and a hospital is not nearby, using a cardboard, wood plank or any other object such as rolled up newspapers and cartons can also be used as a splint. In the hospital, a high groin slab may be applied to children and traction in the form of either skeletal traction or skin traction can be used if the child is of appropriate weight. The treatment of pediatric shaft of femur fractures is divided as per age. From birth to 24 months, we can use a pavlic harness which is specially used for newborns to 6 months. We can use an early spica cast which is called immediate spica casting or a traction and late spica which is very rare. A spica is any cast which is connected to the axial skeleton. So here you can see the limb which is connected to the main axial skeleton. That is why it is called a spica. From 24 months to 5 years, spica casting can be done either immediate spica casting or late spica casting. External fixators such as in this case may be applied and flexible intramedullary nails may be used in certain conditions. From 6 to 11 years, flexible intramedullary nails or tense nails as they are called are often the treatment of choice. Other treatment options can be traction or submuscular plating or external fixation. This is an example of submuscular plating in which 
the shaft of femur fracture is treated by an open reduction and internal fixation using plate. From 12 years onwards to skeletal maturity, a trochanteric entry intramedullary nail may be used. The option of intramedullary flexible nails is also there. Plating and external fixation can also be done. Now, parameters of acceptability for shaft of femur fractures are divided into varus or valgus displacement, anteroposterior displacement and shortening. From birth to 2 years, varus or valgus deformity of less than 30 degrees and anterior posterior deformity of less than 30 degrees along with a shortening of less than 15 mm is acceptable. From 2 to 5 years, a AP and varus valgus deformity of less than 15 degrees and 20 degrees along with shortening of less than 20 mm is acceptable. From between the age of 6 to 10 years, a varus valgus deformity of less than 10 an anterior posterior deformity of less than 15 degrees and shortening of less than 15 mm is acceptable. From 11 years to adulthood, the varus valgus deformity should be less than the anterior posterior deformity should be less than 10 degrees and shortening should be less than 10 mm. From this table, you can see that as the child grows, our acceptability criteria becomes narrower because younger children have higher potential for bone remodeling. Whereas in older children, the potential for remodeling decreases, hence our parameters of acceptability also become narrower. The complications of shaft of femur fractures include limb length discrepancy in children as they grow, there might be a shortening of the affected limb and there is sometimes a lengthening of the normal limb also. There can be overgrowth as well as shortening. Now talking about shaft of femur fractures in adults. It also carries a bimodal distribution with peaks in either young patients with very high energy trauma or old osteoporotic patients after falls. The mechanism of injury include road traffic accidents, gunshot, pathological fractures such as following osteoporosis or neoplasms and stress fractures such as in military recruits and marathon runners. Clinical evaluation include cervical spine, airway, breathing and circulation, a very thorough head to toe examination and if there are no other additional injuries are found, a local examination will be performed of the thigh in which there will be tenderness, swelling, deformity, inability to bear weight and shortening. Neurovascular charting is very rare in shaft of femur fractures but can involve the femoral artery or the sciatic nerve. An examination of the ipsilateral hip and knee is essential. We must address blood loss because shaft of femur fractures potentially can cause a blood loss of 1.2 liters. The associated injuries to the spine, pelvis, ipsilateral lower extremities and ligaments and menisci should also be ruled out. We should delay an examination of the ligaments and menisci only after acute phase is over. To perform X-ray, we must order a trauma series for patients who have had a high injury trauma which include X-ray of the cervical spine, pelvis and chest X-ray. We should also do an AP view of the thigh with hip and knee showing the complete profile of the femur including the hip joint and the knee joint. In this, you can see that only the hip joint is seen in the AP and lateral views but not the knee joint. Sometimes two films can be ordered but it is imperative that the whole femur should be visualized. In addition, a CT scan or an ultrasound should be done to assess other injuries to the abdomen. A CT scan of the pelvis can be done to rule out a neck of femur fracture or acetabulum fractures in addition to the pelvis x-ray. Shaft of femur fractures are commonly classified using the Winquist and Hansen classification. In type 1, there is minimal or no comminution which can be considered as type 0 and type 1. In type 2, the cortices of both fragments are at, at least 50% of contact with each other. In type 3, there is 50 to 100% comminution at the cortices. And in type 4, there is circumferential comminution with no cortical contact whatsoever. The treatment of shaft of femur fractures in adults is also similar. The initial management includes securing the cervical spine, airway, breathing and maintaining circulation. We must manage life-threatening injuries because 
in young patients often these are high energy trauma and there may be other systems which can be involved immobilization of the fracture provides pain relief it reduces the blood loss and also helps in easy mobilization of the patient this can be done either using a skeletal traction using an upper tibial or a lower femoral traction we can also use a thomas knee splint with or without traction the treatment options for shaft of femur fractures can be divided into non operative and operative non operative options are tractions like skeletal traction but it is rarely done these days operative options include intramedullary nailing using an anti grade nail which can be either from the piriformis fossa entry or the tip of the greater trochanter a retrocondylar or supracondylar nail is also an option in which the entry is made through the knee we can also use plating or external fixators for treatment of shaft of femur fractures in adults external fixators are very useful in the management of open femur fractures with because they allow wound healing and can sometimes be used for definitive treatment as well complications of shaft of femur fractures can be divided into early and late early complications include shock fat embolism syndrome injury to the femoral or sciatic nerve injury to the femoral artery infection and compartment syndrome infections are very common in case of open fractures and compartment syndrome is rarely seen in femur fractures because it is a large compartment late complications include a delayed union malunion non union heterotrophic ossifications knee stiffness and implant failure these are my references thank you for watching this video please like share and subscribe to my channel if you like the content